Um, yeah, it was good. Um, you know, without as good as you can get without you know being live. So it, it was good work. I'm glad we did it. No, we were just we were just shooting the shit. <laughs> How do you feel about where the uh, where the offense is at right now, maybe compared to where you've been at this point in twenty 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 one? Yeah, we're obviously I would say higher level execution than we were the last two years. Just we have more years in the offense, more veteran players. Uh, I'm excited about where we're at. Obviously, a lot of room to improve, but where we're at right now, I'm excited about. Very close, yep. Building the body back up. Not don't have far to go to to get to where I want to be. Is that kind of what you thought you'd be right about now when you were coming back up? Yeah, I was hoping. You know, I worked worked really hard to get back to it. Um, still have, you know, a couple more pounds that I'd like to, to put back on, but I'm happy with where I'm at. So you said last week you know we would be one hundred percent if you hit that stage that you know yet? Not yet. Um by the end of this week I'll think I'll be feeling good. You sick of the protein shakes? <laughs> yeah, I feel like a high school kid trying to gain 40 pounds again. We asked you a lot about LC and the addition of him, but um, we haven't asked you a lot about Alex Kappa. What have you seen with the Rams practices also being kind of like the dress rehearsal? What do you like about what he's brought to your offensive line? Yeah, you couldn't ask for anything better from him. He's been a great teammate, great in the locker room, great on the field execution-wise, picking up blitzes, blocking people one-on-one. -on -one. He's been great. You know, why is it? backup quarterback in your role, your, your relationship with him, such a big deal in terms of not only preparing during the week, but preparing and playing on game day. I think not just, you know, the backup, but also, you know, what a, the practice squad guy that we have, everyone brings their own energy to the room, and whether it's, you know, pointing something out to me on film or on the field or just, you know, cracking a joke in the, in the quarterback room or bringing – some joy into that. It gets, and the season gets monotonous, so the more good people that you can have around, the, the better the morale is going to be and the better you're going to play. Also said in the past that extra set of eyes can always, or two sets, like you said, extra eyes can always be helpful. How does that help you? Just a different perspective. You know, they might see something from the sideline that I don't see during the game, and they bring it up, and, and maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't, but it's always good to get as much information as you can and different perspectives to kind of all put into the soup that is game day. Joe, when you look at this team, you know, like a big picture of you, you're out there in the field, you see these guys. What's your view of the roster and are you different than last year? Are you better? Can you sense something, something different? I'm, I'm excited about everybody that we have on the team. You know, everyone made the team for a reason. We're a very, we have a lot of experience at the top, but I think we have a lot of depth um, this year that maybe we haven't had in the past. And so I'm, I'm really excited about everybody that's in there. Your, your head coach, your coordinator, a lot of key players have been together for a while. The continuity and consistency, and you're all still young. How exciting can that be? Yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit for us. It's just obviously stuff to go out and execute on, on Sundays. doesn't matter what we did last year or what we did the year before, how well we played or the numbers we put up. If we don't go out and execute, it doesn't matter. What have you seen from Cordell Wilson? What has he shown you since he was drafted? Big, strong, works really hard. I'm really excited about, you know, what he's going to become. Um, you know, he's a big North Dakota boy that is fun to play with, high energy. You know, he's in his playbook. You can tell he knows his stuff. So he's just going to keep getting better and better. When you face the Bengals defense and you know got against that scheme, what's the biggest thing that stands out to you about the challenges they they pose? Nothing easy. There's nothing easy at practice. They're going to get up and challenge you and challenge you with a lot of different looks and blitzes, and then they're also just going to play man and tell you to go win. Uh, I mean, our our defense is one of the best in the league up front. You can tell that you know those guys have been playing together for a year now. They're Communication is really good. Their stunts and blitzes are are on point, so they're going to be good for us. So do you think you are in a uniquely qualified position to handle not going into the regular season having played a snap in a game? Because you know, 2020 there was no preseason. 
last year was last year, and then this year, obviously, you know, your surgery and your appendectomy. Yeah, I wouldn't say uniquely prepared. I would say there's a lot of players across the league that can go into week one feeling good about where they're at without playing in the preseason, but I would say I'm in that boat. Just, you know, I get most of my work in, in practice anyway, leading up to the game. So we're going to go through our routine next week and, and feel good about it and feel ready to go. So you're not, you don't get overly concerned about contact, speed of the game, tempo, all of that, because you've been through that before, is that right? Would yeah, I would, I would say that's, that's accurate. Obviously, whenever you're facing live bullets, it's going to be a little different for the first tiny bit you're out there, but you get adjusted very quickly. Did it take like a series or two last year? Or did you hit the ground running and just feel normal right first play? When you're in the fire, you're in the fire. It's time to go. So you're not, you're not thinking about all that. You know, I know it's not game week yet, but does the energy feel different now? Does it change at all starting today before this uh, opener next weekend? It feels a little different. You know, the less people in the locker room, more focus. You know, everyone knows it's time to go. I know you've always said you, you speak when you feel like it's necessary. Do you feel like it's needed to have some kind of a message before the season starts to kind of lock this team in at all? I never really think about that. If a message comes to me that I feel like could be useful, I'll come out and say it, but I don't prepare anything beforehand that I think everyone needs to say or hear. So if it comes to me, it comes to me. If it doesn't, it doesn't. What's it feel like? I mean, like, this is going into your third year. I mean, what's it feel like now, maybe being a week away than it was after the first year and the second year we had so many kind of extenuating circumstances about it? Yeah, getting just excited to get going, just like every year. Um, it's no different than when I was in third grade getting ready to play my first game. It's always exciting. Do you remember you played third grade first game? I can't remember, no. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> is, is there anything that you enjoy doing in the off season kind of not, that's not football related that maybe helps you get ready that's like a, kind of cross training but it's not anything to do with football? Does that make sense? Um, no, not really. I mean, I do some kind of workout every day throughout the off season, but um, I wouldn't say anything specific. What makes uh, Jamari Jamari, and why you uh... say it one more time? One, who? <laughs> what makes what makes <laughs> if you want me to? What makes Jamari Jamari? <laughs> and uh, Jemai, and um, why do you have? I mean, it looks like you. There's no there's no doubt in your mind that you're going. I mean, what what exactly is it? Yeah, we've just had a lot of reps together over the years, and he understands where I'm going to put the ball based off certain leverage and technique by the corner and. I know exactly how he's going to run his route based on the same thing. And so we've just accumulated so many reps since his first year in college and my first year starting that we just know what each other is going to do. Do you think, do you think it's his strength? Is it his speed? Is it a little bit of both? Is it his it's mind? just, I mean, I, there's a lot of fast guys and there's a lot of strong guys in the league, but I would say the amount of people that have both are, are pretty rare and that's what makes him special. Remember the first one? Rep that y'all had together at LSU, where you felt like this was going to be like something special, like this is this is different than anything you've kind of dealt with before. Um, you know, nothing specific comes to mind, but I knew he's going to be a really good player from the first first time I, I threw with him. Does he ever make it? Does he ever make a catch now? You say holy, or is it just that's expected? Speed? Expected from him. If he doesn't make the catch, I'm saying the same thing. Like, why didn't you catch that one? You always <laughs> catch that one. You always have a little more experience with the property. You Kind of at that same point now with T and Tyler and the receivers you come up with? Yeah, I would say I'm at, I'm at the same point with those guys. You know, you're with someone for two years, you throw and see so many different looks, and you talk through so many different techniques and coverages against, I mean, there's only so many routes. And so the more reps you accumulate against different looks, you know, you can bank one here and there that maybe you pull out again at the end of the year against that same look, and it turns out to be the same ball and he's going to get his eyes around at the same time. Um, so, yeah, I would say I'm at the same point you know as uh, The LSU team you had in 2019 was so dynamic. It felt like every team you faced was at a serious disadvantage in a lot of ways. Do you feel it's similar now, the way that this offense is comprised here with the players you have, the stars you have? Do you feel that same way about this offense? Yeah, I would say our skill players, if not the best in the league, they're, they're rivaling every single team in the, in the division, in the league. Um, you know, those guys work really hard to get good at what they do, and you got to pick your poison. If you're going to play too high, you're going to have to deal with Joe Mixon in the run game, and if you decide to play man, then good luck.
What is the identity of this offense in your mind? What do you want it to be? 50-50 well, run and pass. You know, you'd like to be able to run the ball really well, which I think we're going to. We got a great running back, a tough physical offensive line that's going to open up holes for him. And then, you know, you got to be able to complement that with play action pass and, and drop back pass as well. So you got to be able to do everything. The past couple of off seasons, you've helped out in free agency where you could just go into dinners and things like that. Have you talked to OJ Howard at all over the past 24 hours? Huh? Have you talked to OJ Howard by chance over the past? Uh, no, I There's a report about it. I don't, I'm not super dialed into. Okay. To uh, <laughs> waiver wires and cuts and all that at this point. Um, a report that he's visiting. Oh, okay, cool. Maybe I'll. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Speaking we'll of get to end, talk to him. Speaking of tight ends, how, how, you mentioned all the reps that you have with Jamar, and now you've got a few with T. How long did it take you to get used to the gate, you know, that Hayden Hurst runs with and then just to throw the football to him like you've been doing it? Yeah, about a week. You know, after first week I was out there in camp, you get used to it and understand how he's going to run his routes. Uh, and then you always come back and talk through with him about what you expect, what he expects, all that. It's, we've created a good dialogue. What was your reaction whenever uh, it was in the GQ article that Jamar did your shot before you? It sounded like more than two. <laughs> no comment on that one. <laughs> so what do you think you all see? Do you, you know, a veteran tackle and you know, not afraid of this shot. What do you think? You know, does it give you guys something different up front? Yeah, he brings toughness. Big, strong, athletic guy that, I mean, we know exactly what we're going to get out of LC. He's going to know exactly what he's doing. He's going to block his guy. He's going to bring toughness, physicality, and all that. So he's a great guy to have. Joe, with an ever-increasing profile, including the SI cover story, uh, how do you handle this increase in celebrity? People want to know more and more about you. Where did that philosophy come from? What's the best way to gauge this? Just keep the business part outside of the – it's different from the football part. You know, you're always trying to build your brand in, in a certain way, but you, know, you can't let it affect the way you prepare in the offseason and get your workouts in and prepare throughout the year, you know, getting your film watched. And so you, know, you have a, a strategy, and then when it's time to go, it's time to go. If you had to describe your brand, what would it, how would you describe it? That's, what's, that's the beauty of a brand. You don't have to describe it yourself. You guys do it for me. 